Can you hear me? Loud and clear. <laughs> We're here with Oliver Barra Pinto, and he lives in Venezuela, and he is making good money with uh, Amazon Publishing. I wouldn't call it Kindle because it involves three different things, but yeah. Uh, so tell us, Oliver, how is it over there? Well, uh, things are pretty uh, good uh, regarding my life and all that. Thanks to uh, self-publishing, I've been making enough money to work independently for the last uh, six or seven years. I started out in 2011. Since then, this has been my main job, or basically my only job. Can you tell me more about how you started uh, from the publishing and how you progressed? Because now you're doing things differently than you were. I mean, you've gained experience and you, you kind of know better what you're doing now, right? Right. Well, I actually started out as a copywriter and a creative director of several uh, okay. advertising agencies. Basically, uh, Ogilvy & Mather, Leo Burnett, Sachi Sachi uh -huh. Thompson. So I worked uh, as a copywriter and creative director for several years. Yeah. And then I switched to journalism. But after a while, I wanted to and after reading Robert Kiyosaki and, and Think and Grow Rich, I really wanted to do an independent business. And uh, mm -hmm. I started out several online businesses. And finally, yeah. I reached uh, Kindle Publishing. I didn't make that, was that much money the first year. No. Uh, yeah, it takes a while to build up. Yeah, but, uh, but I, did, I was making enough money to keep on going. And the second year I okay. did, I broke the 1K mark. And after that, I started earning consistently around 2K, 2.5K. I've published over 200 books now. One thing I never did before was ACX. I had only okay. done two or three audiobooks. More recently, I, I have published more audiobooks, and I only have around 25 audiobooks. But I do have uh, over 200 Kindle books and over 200 paperbacks. It's time to put those other books on audio too, huh? Yeah, yeah. That, I'm doing that. So I'm doing uh, two or three audiobooks a month. I think that when I finally manage to publish 200 audiobooks, I'm going to be making a lot more. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. I think that can help a lot. I started out on my own and learned from... Uh, basically from research and um, your Christmas course last Christmas was the first course I ever took so uh, and yeah. I really liked it you know after that I took I took another course by Dale Roberts and then uh, since everybody was talking about Big Luca I ended up taking Big Luca's course uh, also but that was pretty recently and I know you also took Big Luca's course and a lot of people I know, yeah. so I really wanted to know what was there. But, uh, well, as you know, he's not even uh, teaching his course anymore. No, no, yeah, he, he took it off the internet or he, he's not really promoting it anymore. One of those things, right? right. Um, so, yeah, you, you said the Christmas course was the first thing that you, you took. And, um, yeah, can you tell us how much you made that Christmas? First of all, I'd like to say that I never considered doing anything different uh, on Christmas. And uh, yeah. your course teaches not only how to do a, a correct strategy during Christmas, but it all starts with Black Friday. And uh, yeah. I, that was really interesting because for the first time since I started out, I made like a strategy uh, during November and December, uh, thanks to which I made a uh, 3.5k that was more than i usually make i usually make around 2.5k sometimes close okay. to three but i had never you know i, I never made uh, 3.5 and that yeah. uh, was this christmas after that you know my earnings went down again uh, but yeah. i also know that uh, during christmas 
your sales go up also and a lot of people sell more during Christmas. But I had never experienced that before. I mean, I never noticed. Oh, okay. So, so your income was consistent in the years before, but this Christmas it went up more because, because you, you actively looked for ways to leverage the Christmas season. Yeah. Uh, I really, yeah. I don't want to give away your secrets, but there mm -hmm. are some strategies anyone can apply during the season, uh, the Christmas season, uh, yeah. that can really boost your sales. So I would really yeah, recommend definitely. that course to, to people interested in knowing more about Kindle publishing. Yeah, yeah, and some some people they didn't they didn't want to take my course because they said, well, Christmas sales will go up anyway. Uh, so you know, what, what what's your course going to do for me? But then I said, well, because they are going up, you need to squeeze every dollar out of. You know, you need to rank as high as you can and, and really plan things out instead of just going through the same routine that you always go through and really take into account like, oh, there are more customers going to the Amazon store every every Christmas season. Yeah, definitely. definitely. And, and because of that, you need to plan when you publish your books or when you plan your promos and et cetera, et cetera, right? So, uh, and um, that's how, so... You already had success before my courses, and okay, you mentioned that the Christmas course boosted your sales uh, in in those particular two months that people go to the Amazon store. Um, what about the other courses? What what have you learned from that? And without like <laughs> telling everything about it, but I mean, how has that increased your uh, yeah you know your your expertise on in publishing and how, how have, has that helped you speed up or accelerate the process a little bit well the creative writing uh, course it was really uh, good because i learned a lot about uh, basically about rewriting existing material there are also certain techniques that you teach that i don't really want to mention and, and it all speeds up the process but it, it still takes some work doesn't it it does take work uh, Nothing is free in this business. It requires work and uh, consistency. You need to yeah. put out new books every month. That's basically uh, the secret, no? So yeah, yeah, and we've talked about it before too. There's there's courses that teach to to only get thirty, forty, or fifty books, and and they teach uh, to to have a lot of reviews on each book that they buy. And uh, what a lot of those people find is that their books do good for a few months and then they drop in ranking so it's an ongoing business and every book uh you can help you make a little bit of money but you have to you have to keep publishing them if you want to really keep your business growing huh yeah uh, one thing i mentioned the other day when we, when we were talking is that um there are two types of people in this business the authors the yeah. writers the, the creative people who like to write and those who only see it as a way to make money. So I basically, yeah. I like to write. I consider myself a writer. I've been writing ever since I was a kid. So I, I also do it for the money, but yeah. I enjoy writing. And I also it's enjoy yeah. doing my covers and uh, working on with Photoshop. I like being creative. So mm -hmm. um, I've written basically all my books uh, with the exception of maybe, 10 books which i did outsource, okay. and sometimes yeah. i do outsource parts of the book like maybe a chapter oh, yeah. or two you know but i enjoy writing yeah that's one of the things i like about your uh, creative writing profits course is that you are yeah. basically a writer too so um i felt yeah. like identified with your process it's not only a way to make money but it's also a way to be more creative. So I like that. Yeah. 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 And I, I think you really do need creativity. I mean, uh, what, what do you think about that? If like, if you're trying to be the same as everybody else, then your book's not going to stand out. Huh? Yeah. There's, there's also another problem. Every time I outsource a book, I end up re yeah. rewriting it because they are really not professional enough. And I don't know why, but I've tried several writing companies and they uh -huh. never they never do the job correctly, you know? When, when, when I outsource a book, I I, uh, I have to 
yeah, do something about the layout and I have to like check some things and see if they don't repeat themselves. There's some other things that I always look for. Uh, and yeah, de definitely writing your own books. Uh, it like, that's the thing. It can be so time consuming, but if you know how to speed things up, it can really help, huh? It sure can. And the other course I took was the uh, Creative Keywords Profit. And uh -huh. that was a revealing course because it, you don't only teach how to find uh, the right keywords, but you also teach how to spy on the competition and uh, yeah. several other tricks that I had not seen before and that I did not see in the other courses I took. Uh, I noticed in other courses that they teach a simple way to find a competitive or like a, a sub niche or something. And then they look at the ranking and, and that's it. And, and then they're like, well, there you go. Now you can publish a book on that. But some of them don't even look at how much competition there is. Some of them only look on Kindle. They don't even look at how many paperbacks or like how many audio books are in there. And I also noticed uh, coming up with ideas for new keywords is a trick, but it's like everybody's going after the same keywords, you know, Bitcoin or like the keto diet or something. And then you think like, look, if you can find a keyword that hardly anybody knows about, you might be able to put a book out there and dominate that niche easily because, you know, not, not a lot of people are competing. And I actually have a few books that, uh, you know, my wife came up with the idea. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll look that up. And it's it's a very small target market, but nobody's putting books out there. And my book still makes like fifty or sixty dollars a month there, and it's it's great, you know, even after a whole year. So, so yeah, that that that's uh, I want to, you know, that that's the whole point of these courses is to think outside of the box, and right. and to, to consider all the options and to look at what other people are doing. And then if everybody's going right, maybe you should be going left, you know, and, and, and maybe stand out in a different ways. And so what are your plans for, for publishing and like, what's your goal and how fast do you think you'll get there? Um, like what's your vision for the future? Right now I would settle with 5k a month. I'm working on my audiobooks. Yeah. And I'm also working on more books, continuing several series I have. I have like five series. That's another thing I learned. One of the first books I bought when uh, when I started Kindle Publishing was the book written by John Locke, How I Sold a Million Books in Five Months. It talks a lot of, about something that really uh, works and is create yeah. series. Why? Because people collect them. Someone who gets, yeah. who buys, your first book of a series is likely to buy the rest of the series. So that's one thing he's mentioned in his book. And when I started out, I was publishing uh, independent books. And then I read his book and I said, okay, I'm gonna create a series. Yeah. And I, I published a uh, volume one, then volume two, and they did not sell. So I stopped publishing. Okay. But he says that when he started out, he published number yeah. one and number two of his series, and they did not sell. Mm -hmm. But when he released number three, the series started selling, not only the, not only the third volume, but also the second and the first. So I published the, uh. third, the third volume, and, and they all started selling. So that's when I started making money, thanks to series. Oh, that, that's very encouraging. Yeah, yeah that's so, very encouraging. Because Sometimes you do put the first two books out there and you're like, okay, this is not working. Am I yeah. going to choose a different name? And no, you, you know, put a few more out there and really test it, huh? You have to put out minimum three books before knowing if the series works or not. That's what I found out. Yeah. So actually I have right now, I have uh, like five different series with okay. approximately 10 books each. So okay, and are those fiction or non-fiction books? Uh, basically non-fiction. And then, and then non-fiction, could you like indicate a general, without like revealing okay. your complete keywords or something, can you indicate like what kind of, like are you in health or in business? Or well, I have uh, several uh, categories, several niches. And, uh -huh. uh, but I basically started out teaching Spanish. So I noticed that you also published some, several books teaching Dutch, right? 
Yeah, and and that's the easiest. If you if you speak a different language, you might as well put a book out there how to speak that language. I mean, because you know that's like the easiest book you can write, right? Yeah. So so that's basically what what I started out doing, uh, and I still yeah. do. You know, I I have like fifty Sometimes. different books, maybe more. Okay. On uh -huh. how to learn Spanish, but I also then uh, I spread out. And I also uh, got into self-help, basically religion, meditation, <laughs> etc. Also dog training, which I have some experience, and um, some other niches that uh, okay. I really don't want to mention. Okay? No, you don't have to mention everything. I was just like, like, okay, what kinds of like? I mean, I could tell too. Like, I have some psychology books. I have some business books. Uh, I did put some dieting books out there, but I, I don't really like the dieting niche. Uh, but yeah, all kinds of stuff. So yeah. And right now I have a YouTube channel in Spanish, yeah. which uh, teaches people the basic uh, stuff you need to learn uh, about Kindle publishing. Huh? We'll put a link at the bottom to your channel as well. Okay, yeah. So uh, that people can click there and see. Okay, thanks, yeah. And I want to thank you too for uh, being on my channel and telling me about yourself and about your uh, your publishing experience. Uh, it's clear that you can't publish without my video courses, of course. But uh, you know, if if it can boost your business a little bit, that that's the extra added value that you get from it, right? So um, so yeah, I hope you uh, you will meet your goals soon and uh, hit that 5K per month. Pretty soon, that'd be nice, huh? You can live comfortably on that. One of the big advantages is that you simply take your laptop, uh, your mm -hmm. luggage, take a plane, mm -hmm. and you, wherever you yeah. are, you have your job. So that's yeah, pretty, yeah. I told I told my my mom that too this this afternoon when I talked to her, and we're heading to the Netherlands this this year. Last year we were in Thailand, and. Uh, yeah, I told her, I said, it's it's really nice to have enough money to just buy a flight or buy a cruise right now and to go do that uh, and to, to not have to ask my boss, hey, can I please get a week off from work? You know, I could just <laughs> go there. <laughs> but yeah, that, you know, if you have a day job, it's so different. You know, it, so it, working online, yes, it's hard work. Yes, the more you work, the more you make. But, you know, it, there's so much freedom in it. And and uh, I like that about the business too. So, yeah. Anything yeah. else you want to add to this interview? Anything you want to say as encouragement, as inspiration, as? If you want to do whatever you want in life, uh, you better get yourself an independent job or an independent business uh, yeah. where you are your own boss, and uh, just do it. Uh, it's worth it. You may not make enough money the first year. No. But uh, I assure you I that after a year or after six months, you'll be making enough to quit your day job and start a new life. That's basically it, a new life. Yeah. yeah and that consistency, that's, that's the long-term approach, huh? to, to consistently uh, keep working on it, not to risk getting your account blocked if you, if you don't have to, and you know all that kind of stuff just to really put in the hard work, keep your costs low and to, to pump out high quality books. Huh? That, that's the whole game. And that, I noticed that too, the first year it was harder and the second and the third year it just skyrocketed. But yeah, I still work hard at it. And, and you're right. It's nice. He, and once you get to a certain level, you can still see sales from books you published two, three years ago. And you go like, Oh, huh. You know, this one just made me money, and and it was so long ago that I put in the work, right? Yeah. So so basically, what you're saying is don't give up too fast, huh? No, don't give up too fast. And how much are you making actually? A month. How much am I making right now? Yeah, per month. Uh, so it varies. Uh, I was making. Let me look it up again. Uh, so in publishing, I made. Fourteen thousand, then eight thousand, then eight and a half thousand, eleven thousand, and last month it was ten thousand. And I'm gonna be honest that not all of that is profit. I do invest two or three thousand dollars a month into outsourcing, paying producers, 
you know, and some other things related to the business or related to my courses. But uh, yeah, it's, it's nice. It's a nice consistent income to pay the bills and to save up a few thousand dollars every month. Well, that's really yeah. nice. I congratulate you. So thanks for the interview. It was nice yeah. talking to you. Like Thank well. you. Okay. And uh, guys, click at the bottom for his channel and click at the video courses if, if you want to see any of them. And uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in another video. Subscribe to this channel and leave us a like if you enjoyed this video.